of uh, thanks, uh, Cahirlo. Uh, I'd like to thank the minister also for the earlier briefing, and just ask him first, first of all, I mean, what are the chances now of, of reversing uh, these appalling uh, job cuts uh, in, in Coolock? Uh, I mean, it's quite clear there were extensive contacts between your department, IDA Ireland, Enterprise Ireland, and Justin Cook, the managing director of uh, Mondelez Ireland, over the last two years. Uh, so, why was last last week's annou announcement made in such a particularly shocking uh, and cruel way? And, and why was not wasn't more done to, to, to stop these uh, job losses. Uh, following the takeover of Cadbury's uh, in 2010 uh, by Kraft, I think certain uh, commitments were made by the Kraft company. Uh, we were told, for example, that uh, Coolock was so efficient uh, that it beat off uh, a, a plant in Bristol, and Coolock was being maintained rather than Bristol. Uh, so if it was um, so cost-effective at that particular time, uh, why, in fact, Minister, um, are we now uh, uh, grappling with this situation or are being told that there are cost issues? I notice, Minister, also that uh, many of the other countries that are famous for producing uh, um, chocolate, such as Belgium and Switzerland, for example, are, are high-cost, high-wage uh, economies. So there seems to be some um, gap in, in, in what the company is saying there. I think our first concern, obviously, is for the workers, for people who are being made redundant, what the conditions of that uh, will be, uh, uh, whether those redundancies uh, are voluntary, um, and, and also, indeed, for the pension entitlements of those workers uh, and for the workers who have retired uh, before them. And what have you done, Minister, to try and secure uh, those entitlements and, and also the, the pensions concerned. Uh, as the Deputy Flanagan has said, of course, Cadbury is an iconic name uh, for the whole of the Dublin, Dublin's north side, an iconic name in, in, indeed in our history, in the five Dublin par uh, five Coolock parishes and all the other parishes in uh, um, Kilbarrick and Donamead, Eden Moore, uh, Rohini uh, and Airfield, uh, where thousands of families were, if you like, supported over many generations, Cahirlock, uh, by this company, and indeed where often uh, the key breadwinner, of course, were women workers uh, who very much valued this. So uh, since the days, I think, since I think it was actually 1956 that the uh, uh, Coolock um, uh, fa facility began, uh, it's played such a huge role in, in our country. And Minister, the figures I think you've given us earlier in relation to remaining jobs don't seem to add up with what the company is saying. They're saying something like 700 jobs. You seem to be saying something less than 400 uh, at Coolock, Rathmore and Kerry. And Rathmore and Kerry. So I'd like the Minister to clarify this. But it, it was a very sad day for Coolock, uh, Cahirlock, last Thursday. And I'd like the Minister, as uh, I think as somebody who's represented the area for nearly 35 years, uh, to uh, come back with some strong uh, suggestions uh, for the future of this area. Well, Deputy Sean Kenny. Uh, thank you, uh, I wish to join with the previous speakers in expressing concerns at the manner in which the news of this bombshell came out of the blue to the workforce uh, at Coolock, where it is predicted that somewhere between 90 and 110 will lose their jobs. For the workers who will be selected for redundancy, it will be a dark day when this happens. <clears throat> for many years, and indeed for almost 60 years, Cadbury's and Coolock has been an iconic brand and has provided very good employment on the north side of Dublin. They were recently taken over by Mondelez, which is part of the food multi multinational group Kraft. The workforce in Cadbury's Mondelez have given sterling service to their company over the years, and it is very galling for them to learn that their jobs will be gone when the lines that they currently produce will be transferred to Poland, where there are lower wage costs. This fact, fact has added to their anger and to that of their colleagues in Talla and Rathmore also. There is concern also that Mondelez are planning to restructure existing terms and conditions of employment uh, and the number of shifts with 12 lines will be, I understand, being planned to con be consolidated into six lines. Paradoxically, paradoxically, all of this is happening after a recent announcement that 12 million euros was being invested in the Coolock plant by Mondelez. Concern has also been expressed to me regarding the future of the Cadbury's pension fund and the position of retired workers currently in receipt of a pension. I understand that their position is not secure under the TUPE, the Transfer of Undertakings of Employment Legislation, and I would like the Minister to clarify this. I understand that the, um, the unions representing the workforce met with Mondelez management yesterday and that further talks are planned. In conclusion, Minister, can you, uh, can you say what you can do to minimise the effect of the proposed redundancies uh, on the wider uh, community in the Coolock and Northside area? And can you outline what retraining and reskilling options will be made available to the redundant workers uh, and uh, will they receive assistance in accessing similar employment with the skills that they have acquired? Thank you. Thanks, Deputy Kenny. No. Uh, Carlick, first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity of speaking to this urgent and important debate on the job losses at Cadbury's Chocolate Factory in Coolock. 
First of all, can I say this is a very, very bad and sad blow to all of the staff at Cabaries and their families. But it's also a huge blow to the people of the north side of Dublin. The staff and the family members and the people of my constituency are absolutely gutted by this announcement and the loss of 145 jobs. It's also a severe blow to the local economy, particularly from a company that is making major profits in this country. We all have many friends, Minister. We all have many neighbours working in Cabries. So it's a major loss to the whole area right across the north side of Dublin. On top of this talk about cost differences and restructuring, many of the remaining staff are severely worried about the future and the complete deterioration of working conditions. The Minister and Enterprise Ireland said at today's meeting that the long-term interests of the company are good. But that's not what I'm hearing on the ground. Staff are very worried about their pensions and also their terms and conditions of employment. The two-pay issue is a major concern for staff, and many staff are worried about this. The electricians, the fitters and the staff are extremely concerned about this. And the Minister and the Government need to address these matters in his response today. Finally, here we have a profitable company in Ireland that is saying it's investing more, but at the same time laying off staff and also destroying the terms and working conditions of the staff. I'd like to ask some questions today. Was there a role and what was the role of, I of IBEC in all of this? And will the Minister agree that in a recent report in the Financial Times, which stated categorically that there is overwhelming evidence that higher pay increases productivity? So we have all have to be careful that this is just not another race to the bottom. Let's hope this company is not just harvesting expertise and experience in, and then heading back with our money to Zurich or Poland. I urge Minister action on this company. The North Side needs jobs, we need investment, and we need your support today. Thanks, thank you, Carla. Minister. Uh, well, I'd like to thank uh, Deputies Flanagan, uh, Brahan, Kenny and McGrath uh, for raising this issue. Um, I absolutely share their, their concern for the workers involved. Uh, certainly this is a disappointment uh, for, for many people. Uh, I know this company um, intimately over a long period. They first established in 1932. Uh, in, in, in Dublin, so they're, they're, they're uh, here for a very long, long time. Um, I suppose at any given time we're working with companies who are developing opportunities to grow and we're also working with companies which sadly includes Cadbury's who are struggling uh, with the issues that they have to overcome. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort into working with Cadbury's in the hope that uh, this could be avoided. Uh, I spoke directly at the highest level to the company seeking to have this uh, not occur. But unfortunately, the, the level of uh, cost difference was such that uh, they felt obliged to proceed with this. Nonetheless, as, as we outlined in our meeting earlier, uh, the, the company is committing to an investment of 11.7 million in the site. It believes uh, uh, that it has a strong future in Dublin uh, and it is investing, putting hard money into, into that. Clearly, we will work with the company in uh, seeking to deliver a, 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 a a site there and in Rathmore that can be uh, successful and grow into the future. And I think it is worth recalling that in the Bausch and Lom case where we had real problems and a similar downsizing and a restructuring of, of, of uh, terms and conditions and, and so on, we have emerged with a situation where that company is now growing and adding employment. And certainly that would be my hope that in this case that would be uh, the same again. Uh, I can assure the deputies that I have uh, instructed Enterprise Ireland to do the coordination work across all of the agencies from uh, the Minister of Social Protection Services, Solace Services, uh, the local enterprise offices, all the various services in, uh, NERA who could be of support to workers uh, in this situation. Um, a number of deputies raised the issue of the transfer of undertakings legislation. This is legislation which uh, provides a guarantee that if a person, uh, if their employer changes, that that uh, change in itself can't change their terms and conditions. So at the point of transfer, their terms and conditions uh, are protected. 
Uh, however, that doesn't mean that uh, a restructuring uh, arrangement cannot take place in those circumstances. Uh, the company is obviously entering into negotiations with the trade unions. Uh, I know uh, it has a history of, of offering uh, reasonable terms and conditions in these circumstances, but clearly this is a matter for the company and the trade unions uh, to negotiate with. Um, I suppose the, 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 the challenge for us is to work through this and try to protect as many uh, quality jobs in the plant that we can, that will have the capacity to grow and be competitive in the longer term. Uh, it, is a, it is a tough and competitive world. Uh, Finian McGrath is right that investment in R&D, in, in innovation, in lean technology processes are absolutely crucial to maintaining uh, strong manufacturing sectors uh, and we will stand ready to support the investment in, in, those, uh, in those, those areas. Um, clearly we, do, we cannot offer capital support in, a, in, a, in, in, in Dublin. Uh, the other element of this is that we are obviously going to look not just in Dublin uh, and in, in Kulak, in Tala and in, in Kerry, we are, are very focused on finding alternative employment. That remains our uh, abiding drive. Uh, in Dublin we have had considerable success. In net terms, 35,000 extra people are back at work in the last uh, four years in, in Dublin. Uh, and we are seeing uh, some recovery in manufacturing after nearly 25 years of decline. Uh, so th there are issues here that, that we need to work through. Uh, and I can assure you that the, the support of the agencies will be available to the workers affected. Uh, and also we'll be working with uh, the company and the workers who remain to try to ensure that uh, they have a strong and sustainable employment prospects uh, when this uh, process is, is, is through. Thanks, Minister. Now, Deputy Flanagan. Uh, thank you, Kerry and just to thank the Minister for his response, and I know he's gen hugely genuine in the area and trying to uh, ensure that there is alternative em employment found for those workers, and um, it's really skilling, retraining is, is possibly needed there. As you, as you said in the earlier meeting, that there is opportunities um, with Milan and Baldoyle, and perhaps you could just expand further on that, what other opportunities there will be. Uh, in the coming months and years ahead for these workers. But really, um, I suppose the decision that was made came as a bolt out of the blue. People are only uh, getting, to, getting to accept it and there's an adjustment uh, factor in, in, in all that and it takes time and it's a huge strain, obviously, on the workers um, that are going to be directly affected, but on the existing workers as well, there would be concern that their terms and conditions will be watered down, that this will be used as an opportunity to do that. So is there any assurance you can give there um, to, to those that will continue you work in for Cadbury that their terms uh, won't change and also um, that you will ensure that there is a fair um, redundancy package for those workers directly affected uh, including uh, adequate uh, pension entitlements as well as Deputy Thanks, Finian Mr. McGrath said it's not a profits issue here like the company is very successful it's making huge profits and they need to reward uh, the workers directly. Thanks, Deputy. Now, Deputy Brown. Uh, thanks, uh, Cahir, look. Well, just to start on that point again, the 11.7 uh, million um, investment programme, I mean, how much of that will be used to ensure that that workforce, if it's still only 385 or whatever that's left in Coolock, that that workforce will be able to, to grow in the future? Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, we need upskilling and uh, replacement jobs for people made redundant, but uh, what's, is there any commitment to increasing jobs at the Coolock plant? Can I just say to you also, Minister, as you know, um, there are a number of food companies that have closed over the uh, recent years in that particular area. Uh, Chivers, for example, uh, nearby Tato, iconic uh, Irish brands. Uh, and you've done nothing since you've been a minister, although you represent the area, you've done absolutely nothing uh, to try and restore, if you like, these uh, high quality food production jobs um, in Coolock. You, you talked about the number of jobs gained in Dublin, but uh, even on your own figures, I think we've lost something like 65,000 jobs during the, during the period of your government and the previous disastrous government. Uh, Cadbury, uh, under Donald Byrne and onwards, of course, was a strong supporter of local development. And as you know, I was the founding chairperson of Coolock Development Council and have been a long-time director there. Have you, have you finally removed a threat in relation to the, um, the, to, to, to the uh, enterprise uh, manager <coughs> grant, uh, the, uh, the development manager grant, uh, which seemed to be so uncertain over the past year, and which has on the ground produced uh, a lot of jobs in the Coolock area? Thanks. So, Deputy Kenny. Uh, thank